The arrest. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up. With him was a crowd, armed with swords and clubs, who had been sent by the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders. The traitor had arranged a signal for them. The one I kiss, he is the man. Arrest him and take him away, under guard. So, when he came, he went directly to Jesus and said, Master, Master, and kissed him. Then they seized Jesus and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword and struck out at the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Jesus turned to them and said, So you have set out against a rubber. Did you need swords and clubs to arrest me? Day after day, I was among with you, teaching in the temple, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. Then they all deserted him and fled. A young man covered by nothing but a linen cloth followed Jesus. When they took hold of him, he left the cloth in their hands and fled away naked. They led Jesus to the high priests, and all the chief priests assembled, with the elders and the teachers of the law. Peter had followed him at a distance and went right into the courtyard of the high priests, where he sat with the guards warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council tried to find some evidence against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they were unable to find anything. Even though many came up to speak falsely against him, their evidence did not agree. At last, some stood up and gave this false witness. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made by human hands. And in three days, I will build another, not made by human hands. But even so, their evidence did not agree. The high priest then stood up in the midst of them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer at all? What about this evidence against you? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see, the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Most Powerful, and coming with the clouds of heaven around him. Then the high priest, tearing his garments to show his horror, said, What more evidence do we need? You have just heard his blasphemous words. What is your decision? They all condemned Jesus, saying, he must die. Some of them began to spit on Jesus, and blindfolding him, they struck him and said, Play the prophet. And the guards set upon him, with blows. Biblical Lesson Judas was one of the twelve. After a night of prayer, how could Jesus have chosen the one who would betray him? When Judas followed Jesus, he waited, like the rest of the apostles for a liberator in the ordinary sense. The others, as they came to know Jesus better, gradually changed their ambitions, but Judas did not. Judas betrayed Jesus to take revenge against a master who had disappointed him. Though Judas was among Jesus' closest group, he could not return the master's affection for him and finally returned hatred for love, falling into an abyss of evil. Perhaps the other apostles contributed as well to Judas' failure. Judas, like Levi Matthew, joined a team in which the majority were fishermen from Galilee. Had they tried hard enough to integrate him into their group, Jesus appeared before two courts, Firts, before the Sanhedrin, or the Supreme Council of the Jews, where he was accused of blasphemy. Later he was brought before the Roman governor Pilate, and accused of being a political agitator. The reason for this double process was that the Jews, under the Roman rule, had lost the power to issue the death sentence. So, after judging Jesus, according to their law, that is, the laws of the scriptures, they asked Pontius Pilate to implement the death penalty, to impress and convince Pilate 
they fabricated new charges. It is very difficult to say whether Jesus' trial was dealt with in a legal way or not. It was similar to many other trials in which the authorities can twist the law and condemn their opponents without resorting to obvious fraud. The priest could not sentence Jesus to death for minor violations of the law. That is why they had to find something more important. It is what occupies the central place in the gospel. Are you the son of God? Jesus answered by combining two biblical texts that reflects the divine personality of the Savior, son of man who comes from God himself, who is seated at the right hand of God as an equal. With this assertion, Jesus clearly affirmed that he is not only a son of God, as a saint or an envoy of God, but the only one who shares the divinity of the Father. The priests were not mistaken in their understanding of what Jesus claimed to be a son of God. They condemned him, not just because he used a dangerous word, but because in all his way of acting Jesus put himself in a place fitting only to God. They could soothe their conscience, for they were upholding the honor due to the only one. So they forgot that, actually, they hated him because he had denounced their hypocrisy, their lack of faith, and their love of money. Jesus felt free about religious rules. They defended and had caused them to fall from their pedestals. God had come in the person of Jesus to demand from them the fruits of the vineyard, calling them to account, and they opposed him. Jesus was condemned in the name of God. He did not rebel against the unjust sentence imposed by the religious leaders of his people who were the legal, though unworthy, representatives of God. This was his perfect obedience to the Father.